Good evening and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending February 22nd, 2020. First up this week, an unfortunate news... One moment. Unfortunate news uh, category. A large number of events and episode airings have been canceled or delayed due to the concerns surrounding the, the current coronavirus outbreak. The seventh episodes of both Infinite Dendrogram and A Certain Scientific Railgun T anime have been delayed from airing this week due to production issues related to the virus outbreak. Each show will air a previous episode during their time slot this week and have said they will reveal when the new episodes will get back on the air at a later date. Uh, the Ghibli Museum, in fact, yeah, it's gotten that serious, announced this morning that they will be closing until March 17th as the metropolis of Tokyo has issued a policy statement about postponing or canceling events until mid-March, stating that these next three weeks are a critical period for containing the outbreak. Many different video game and anime-related events that had been scheduled over the next several weeks have also been delayed or just outright canceled. The 16th annual Osaka Nippombashi Street Festa, billed as, quote, Japan's biggest cosplay event, end quote, has straight out canceled their March 15th parade and event, which typically draws more than 200,000 people. Bushi Road also announced it'll be delaying and canceling all sponsored events scheduled until March 19th, including events related to their various card games, video games, and anime projects. The company is offering refunds for all tickets sold for the events, which is nice, even if they were only postponed, and asked for their fans' understanding during this situation. Bushi Road also announced that they will not attend this year's uh, Anime Japan 2020 trade show, where they had planned to run booths for both their Assault, uh, for their Assault Lily, Bang Dream, and Rebirth for You franchises. Uh, several video game events have also suffered uh, cancellations or delays, as you might imagine, um, all attributed to the coronavirus situation, including the Tokyo 2020 Game Show and the Taipei Game Show. Sony has even canceled their appearance at PAX East entirely. Ooh, it's pretty serious. Um, there are obviously too many geek-related events that have been affected to cover them all here, so keep an eye on your favorite shows and events, Twitter streams, all that, and be sure to stay safe. Let's hope the situation does not continue much longer, and hope for swift recovery and safety to all those fans and staff affected. Man, who knew? Um, I actually have my own story about all this, but that's a whole other thing. Um, continuing on to our more standard weekly news, our first anime announcement this week stems from another isekai novel about slimes, but with a bit of a twist. The official website of publisher Hobby Japan announced on Thursday that author Roy and illustrator Rinra's By the Grace of the Gods light novel series is inspiring an anime. The novel initially began serialization on the Shosetsuka Ninaro website in 2014 before ending and then launching a new version in 2015. This version is still ongoing with Hobby Japan publishing the illustrated print volumes. Uh, now, the novels tell the story of businessman Ryoma Takabayashi, who, big surprise, gets reincarnated after his death into a fantasy world. He decides to spend a leisurely life in the forest, working on hunting and magic, but his greatest passion ends up being training and researching his tamed slimes. Uh, he doesn't appear to turn into one, though. J Novel Club publishes the English novels digitally and describes, quote, Training a variety of slimes, some newly discovered, the curtain rises on this easygoing life fantasy celebrating a second life with kind people in another world, end quote. The novels also inspired a manga adaptation, of course, which began in 2017 and will get its first published English volume in November. So if this sounds like your type of thing, keep an eye out for more fantasy slimes. Also sounds like sort of a slice-of-life, calming, relaxing anime, hopefully, which would be nice. Uh, meanwhile, Sunrise announced this week... Whoops, one second. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Sunrise announced this week... There we go. 
Um, they're, they're starting animation work on a new animation in the Gundam Build Divers franchise. The tentatively titled Gundam Build Divers series Battlelog will depict fan-voted Gunpla battles. Sunrise did not specify a debut date or broadcast method for the show, but did announce uh, that the special voting site where fans can pick their favorite battles will open in April, so we probably have a bit of a ways to go before that anime comes out. Gundam Build Fighters also had a similar Gundam Build Fighters battlelog anime back in 2017, featuring dream battles with various gunpla and situations. So, Gundam fans, watch out for the website opening in April and start planning your dream gunpla battle. The idle training app game Tokyo 7th Sisters celebrated its 6th anniversary on Wednesday with an announcement for an upcoming short anime film. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, the new 70-minute film will be made by Toy Animation and will screen in theaters this summer uh, for a limited simultaneous run. Not quite sure what that means. The idle raising rhythm and adventure game, so-called, was released by Donuts in 2014 and has also inspired several manga and novel adaptations. Donuts is actually the name of the company. In the game, the player takes on the role of new manager of Studio 37 and is tasked with scouting promising young idols. Nothing creepy about that. The trainees compete to win the favor of fans and develop their skills by singing original songs written by young artists of the Vocaloid generation. Hmm. Uh, the game also inspired an anime music video back in 2017, so idol fans, check that out and look forward to the upcoming movie. More idols. Imagine that. Now, we don't usually announce every addition to anime streaming services because we get new stuff every week, but this one's a bit more notable than most. This week, Funimation began streaming a group of classic anime from Nozomi Entertainment. These include the original Astro Boy from 1963, Kimba the White Lion, Revolutionary Girl Utena, Princess Knight, and a Martian successor Nadesico, along with the adolescence of Utena and Mar Martian successor Nadesico, Prince of Darkness anime films. Um, the anime will be available to stream in the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Ireland. Astro Boy, Kimba the White Lion, and Princess Knight will stream only in English. There are actually reasons for that for some of these. Uh, with the others available in both English and Japanese with English subtitles. So if you're looking to relive some classic memories or... Experience these well-known pieces for the first time. Head over to Funimation for that. Honestly, these are all really important. Uh, this week also brings some exciting news for music fans, Ghibli fans, and both. As of Friday, the 38 soundtrack and image albums from Tokuma Japan Studio Ghibli Records label are available on major music subscription services. The album lineup includes 23 movie soundtracks, 14 Im image albums, and one best album titled Studio Ghibli Songs Enlarged Edition. The albums can be found on music services like Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, and Spotify, along with several other international streaming platforms. So, if you're looking for good soundtracks for your fantasy adventure, or... Anything else, any, anything else you're up to in your normal life, look for these on your music site of choice. Um, another one bites the dust this week in the saga of manga piracy sites with a bit of a twist. The manga in question this time is actually Dojinshi. A female manga artist won a lawsuit this week against media company A-Class, which operates Dojinshi manga piracy sites. This is interesting. The Tokyo District Court ruled that the IT company was liable for approximately 2.19 million yen, about 19,000 US dollars, in damages to the woman. She originally filed the lawsuit in December 2018, as her works had been uploaded without her permission to seven different Dojinshi piracy websites. How interesting. I imagine certain websites out there are very uh, concerned about this. As the plaintiff in the case was both an original manga artist and a creator of doujin works related to manga, anime, and games, A-Class argued that she was not eligible for compensation because her own works were unauthorized derivatives. However, Judge Tatsufumi Sato uh, ruled that there was insufficient evidence to prove that the works were in fact unlawful derivatives, and so the ruling went in her favor. Ah, 
how interesting that'll be uh that'll be interesting for a lot of reasons uh as time goes on uh, in case you hadn't seen this one earlier, here's a tip for anyone with a bit of extra cash to spend. Katakawa has opened an official web store dedicated to overseas fans. EJ Anime Store is an online shop for anime, manga, light novels, games, and merchandise. It is currently available to 17 countries and regions around the world, including the United States, Taiwan, Hong Kong, South Korea, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Katakawa plans to expand the store in future to 80 different countries, 8-0, including China. Wow. The store is not planned to open in Japan, since Katakawa already operates Katakawa store there. Uh, Katakawa noted that the Katakawa store has seen a 170% increase in overseas traffic to the site since 2016, mainly coming from North America and other parts of Asia, so there's clearly good incentive for opening an international store. Makes sense to me. <coughs> Excuse me. The web store can be found at ejanimestore.com. So if you're looking for merchandise or copies of your favorite series, go check it out. Pretty cool. Let's see here. Our first fun story this week is the perfect example of the weird and wonderful world of otaku promotions in Japan. The quintessential quintuplets manga published its last chapter on Wednesday, and on Thursday it was announced that a chapel in Shibuya will be hosting five different wedding ceremonies, one for each girl in April. That's not a drawing. Yep, large illustrations of the five girls in wedding dresses will be displayed at the Ivy Hall Glory Chapel from April 10th to April 14th. Fans can gain access to the first come first served event, sign up by becoming joint partners. You apply for joint partner by purchasing digital art of the girl of your choice for 1500 yen, about 15 bucks. You then receive a digital certificate with your name written alongside creator Negi Haruba, editor Shintaro Kawakubo, and other names involved in the creation of the quintessential quintuplets. Signing up as a joint partner will also give fans access to purchase exclusive art and merchandise, of course. Sometimes you hear about things happening in the otaku world and think, you know, this shouldn't be surprising by now, but maybe there are some things you never get used to. In any case, here's to all the happy couples, fans, looking forward to their wedding ceremony in April. Uh, um, I don't know. Who am I to judge? Our last news tidbit is definitely a kind of promotion it would be fun to see more of. The Map Plus navigation app has announced an upcoming promotion with code GIAS, bringing a Lelouch Vibritania voice pack to order you around. The voice pack will include lines from Lelouch in both his regular and zero persona. The lines are voiced by Jun Fukuyama himself, naturally. The pack features lines like, You're going out now? It can't be helped. I'll accompany you. Don't be late along with more show-specific lines like CC, create a diversion with the Gawain, proceed as ordered. Oh well. Um, Ma Plus has also posted a video on Twitter showing a sample of the voice pack, as so you can check that out. Now, this is not the first time Ma Plus has collaborated with anime properties. In the past, they featured collabs with anime like Psycho Pass, A Certain Scientific Railgun T, and When They Cry Higurashi. I want to hear that voice pack now. The Map Plus app is sadly only available in Japanese app stores for now, but maybe someday we'll get fun GPS voice pack that voice packs overseas as well. What characters would you like? Would you all like to see in a GPS voice pack? I wonder. Thanks all for watching. See you next week.